some change. One year ago, he was prevented from even coming. And him, well, he wasn't going, then maybe, then yes, briefly. Spool on a year, King Charles centre stage, recognition for a man who's been warning for decades about climate and fossil fuels. With what we are witnessing, our choice now is a starker and darker one. How dangerous are we actually prepared to make our world? And the PM here, but the UK's reputation for climate leadership damaged by his changing a series of key green promises at home. We have got an incredible track record in decarbonising in the UK, faster than any other major economy. We should be really proud of that, and I'll be proud of that record at my meetings later today. So we can get to net zero, but we can do so in a more realistic, proportionate way. Sunak's ministers doing the media rounds here to press UK climate commitments against significant global criticism. Uh, by 2030, we're going to cut carbon um, from our uh, economy by 68%. The EU is at 55% and the US is at 40%. So that gives you an idea of how far ahead the UK is. Many delegates here aren't convinced. One climate expert schooled in diplomatic etiquette, openly saying only a change of government can now raise the UK's stock. Actually, I think the UK has lost enormous credibility here. I'm glad the opposition party will be here as well. I think there'll be a lot of interest around Keir Starmer and David Lammy looking at what they're going to do. And honestly, I think some hope that next year at the COP we'll have a different UK government because people have lost confidence that this UK government can really deliver the change we need. Flash flooding in Kenya today. At least 200 people have been killed, 40,000 displaced across East Africa after the worst drought in 40 years. Keir Starmer, like the Prime Minister, also in Dubai today and also referencing global climate turbulence. Both he and the PM also saying their strategies will cut emissions and your energy bills. For the Tories, it's still very much a fossil fuel and renewable mix, Labour emphasising massive wind and solar investment. What I want to see is much more global leadership from the United Kingdom. I'm here as a statement of intent that should there be an election next year that we win, then we will play our full part on the international stage, obviously towards those net zero targets, but also because of the huge benefit to millions of people back in the UK who desperately need those lower bills. Leaders come, leaders go, the work falls to others. So negotiators sent off with yet another blast from a UN boss desperate to move faster. The 1.5 degree limit is only possible if we ultimately stop burning all fossil fuels. Not reduce, not abate, phase out with a clear time frame aligned with 1.5 degrees. But will this summit agree to phasing out fossil fuels here in a petro state of all places? It is nearer than ever, but don't bet on it. Well, earlier I sat down with the man who won a Nobel Peace Prize for his environmental campaigning, whose groundbreaking documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, won an Oscar almost 20 years ago, warning humanity of the dangers of man-made global warming. I asked him first off what he makes today of oil-rich nations and fossil fuel companies continuing to press to drill more oil and gas. Every proposal in the world that, I've, that I'm aware of to reduce the consumption of fossil fuels at the local level, the provincial or state level, the national level. The fossil fuel companies are in there fighting it tooth and nail. Uh, and the question I have is, how can they sleep at night when the stakes are so high, when this crisis is so abundantly obvious to just about everybody? Now, when people are suffering because of these extreme climate related events and when we have the solutions readily available and they're in there using all of their tricks and tools to artificially increase the demand and stop anything that will reduce it. And yet the, if I may use the phrase, the inconvenient truth, mm. your country wants to do the same, keep drilling, my country wants to do the same, keep yeah. drilling, we're Saudis. And the message we get here as well, we're going to push renewables but they're pushing fossil fuels way more than, than renewables. And you're right, it's the same thing in my country, same thing in your country. 
We have to amplify the voices of the people at the grassroots level who know what's happening, for the most part, uh, and, and get governments out of the grip of these fossil fuel lobbyists. Talking of governments, you were at COP in Glasgow two years ago, of course. Mm. Where's the UK government now? A lot of talk about how we've thrown in the towel, we've lost leadership, we've lost cachet and purchase across the globe. Do you see that? Uh, it's, it's sad, really, for those of us who have in the past pointed to the UK as an example of really inspiring leadership. And I thought King Charles's speech today was an example of great leadership. But the, the, the government of the UK now is seemingly, maybe I'm wrong, but they seem to be in the pocket of the fossil fuel companies. Really? Well, I, that's not a specific accusation. I will just Sounded say... Sounded like it. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think that in, in many places around the world, you see the influence of the fossil fuel companies on specific politicians. They are way better at capturing politicians than they are at capturing emissions. Can we phase down fossil fuels? Can we get a deal yes. here on that? Yes. Oh, oh, here at this yeah. COP, we need a reform of the COP process because uh, if the chair of the COP is the CEO of a, one of the biggest fossil fuel companies in the world, uh, if somebody proposes phasing down fossil fuels, he's going to see the objections from Saudi Arabia. And he's, oh, sorry, we don't have consensus, so we can't do it. Uh, I hope I'm wrong about that. I would love to be surprised. The pressure is building. This, the pressure is building because of the harsh impact of these extreme events every day now around in many places around the world. Uh, and so I could be surprised. But unfortunately, um, the head of this COP has already failed to go forward with supporting a phase down of fossil fuels or a phase out of fossil fuels, which is really what is needed. Uh, it's still early, so we should wait and see whether or not there will be a pleasant surprise here. I hope there is. I don't expect one. We all do, Mr. President. Thank you. Vice President, thanks very much indeed for your time. Understandable mistake. That was <laughs>